Welcome to Zemkin. Now today's video is on chemical thermodynamics part 3 video and here we will deal with concept of internal energy and statement for first law. Now already two videos of chemical thermodynamics are available in the channel. You can watch it. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video. And if you are new to Zemkin, do not forget to subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates. Now let us start. Now, what do we mean by processes of transformation? First, we will deal with the types of processes. As we have dealt in the previous video, isothermal process, just like that, there are similar processes. Now, a process is a path along which the transformation takes place, that is, change takes place. Now, types of processes are isothermal process, which occurs under constant temperature condition, isobaric process, which occurs under constant volume condition, isochoric process which occurs under constant pressure condition and adiabatic process occurs under the condition that heat can neither be created nor be removed from the system that is addition or removal of heat is prohibited now what do we mean by cyclic process we have already seen in the processes system undergoes series of changes and ultimately return back to the original state and quasi-static or reversible process refers to if a process is carried out in such a way that at every moment the system departs only infinitesimally from an equilibrium state, it is called reversible process. And we have dealt with reversible process and irreversible process in the previous video in details. Now, what do we mean by internal energy? So, we first will get an idea about the internal energy and then we will dive into the first law of thermodynamics. So, internal energy in thermodynamics is defined as the definite amount of energy associated with every substance which depends on its chemical nature as well as upon its temperature, pressure and volume. So, it is the amount of energy which is associated or collaborated with every substances and this energy depends particularly on the chemical nature of the substance as well as temperature, pressure and volume. And this we know that internal energy U of an isolated system is always constant and it is a state function we have already seen. Now what do we mean by first law of thermodynamics? Now in simple languages first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. But in mathematical term we have to know the thing. Right. So if a closed system is subjected to a cyclic transformation, as we have seen cyclic transformation in the previous video, so the algebraic sum of heat, that is heat and work included is zero. So the total of the heat and work is zero. And since cyclic transformation is considered, so we are taking cyclic integral of dq plus cyclic integral of dw is equals to zero, which can be together written as cyclic integral dq plus dw equals to 0 and we should understand that this dq plus dw should be an exact differential since its cyclic integration is 0. This equation is a mathematical expression for first law of thermodynamics. Okay. Now we need to know something. From this we can write it as e cyclic integral dq is equals to minus cyclic integral dw right and from here it can be written as q equals to minus w right so as we have seen the sign convention that can be proved from here okay so if q is equals to positive then w will be negative so for an endothermic process endothermic process then system will absorb energy system absorb heat and similarly if q is negative then w will be positive and the process will be exothermic and the system releases heat that is gives up heat okay so this is important to understand right and here it is absorbs heat right now this 
is possibly the summation results in an exact differential and we write this as du u is known as energy function internal energy or intrinsic function so we have dealt with what is internal energy and it is equal to dq plus dw more precisely it can be written as like this that is du being a exact differential whereas dq being inexact so we write a bar over it plus dw where this is also an inexact differential okay so now we will see internal energy changes for different processes now first listen this one there is the energy function that is internal energy is a function of state variables which are used to define the system for example the energy function for one mole of a gas can be written as u to be the function of temperature or volume or temperature or pressure or pressure or volume the value of the energy function for a given state is determined by the values assigned to the state variables so it is determined by the values which are being assigned to p t v that is pressure temperature and volume and the function is determined only in terms of differential and the absolute value of the energy function for any given state of system may not be precisely known so it is important that we cannot determine precisely what is the value of energy function but we can get the value as a change now we will see change in internal energy for a finite process now for a finite process the difference between the values of the energy functions in two states can be determined by integrating du that is differential of u as the letter is an exact differential we know this is an exact differential this difference is independent of the path followed we know that this is a state function so it will not depend on path right so in going from initial to final state it is independent of the path followed thus from state a to state b we can write integration is from a to b and integration of dq plus integration of dw over the range of ab now this can be obtained as ub minus ua equals to q plus w where delta u is equals to q plus w it may be noted that the values of both q and w depends upon the path as we know and we have seen that q and w are path functions so they depend on the path followed in going from state a to state b but the algebraic sum of these two quantities are independent of the path and this follows immediately from the fact that u is a state function now we will see change in internal energy under constant volume now if a system can undergo only pv work suppose the work is considered to be pv so we have already dealt with the formula of work and the derivations of different work for different processes so from there if only pv work is considered that is pressure volume work then under condition of constant volume we will have dw equals to minus p external dv equals to 0 that is since there is constant volume so no change in volume so this term will be 0 so du is equals to dq plus dw which reduces to du equals to dqv that is when a system undergoes a change at constant volume condition the heat involved merely changes its internal energy to be specific what does it mean heat absorbed by a system under constant volume condition increases its internal energy the amount of heat absorbed will increase the internal energy and the amount of heat released will decrease the internal energy when the condition is that the volume is constant now specifically this equation will be required for our next derivation and which is very important that is we will derive change in internal energy with temperature now first we have seen that u can be written as function of p t and v but we here suppose that u is a function of temperature and volume for closed system and fixed mass of substance now on doing the total differential of this one we know how to do the total differential right so what we get we will see that in the first video we have dealt with how to do the total differential so here du comes to be as del u by del t at constant v dt 
फ्लास्क दिल यू बाई दिल वी एट कॉन्स्टेंट टी डी वी सो वॉट वी आर डूइंग योर अगेन वी शुड नो दैट फर्स्ट वी टेक दिस टर्म डिवाइडेड बाई दिस टर्म डेल्टा एंड कॉन्स्टेंट वी एंड नेक्स्ट वन वी विल टेक दिस टर्म दैट इज डेल यू एंड डिवाइडेड बाई डेल्टा वी एंड टेक द टी कॉन्स्टेंट एंड मल्टीप्लाई इट बाई डी वी नाउ नेक्स्ट स्टेप वी विल डू कॉन्स्टेंट केसेस दैट इज वेन इफ वी कॉन्सिडर एट कॉन्स्टेंट टी सो एट कॉन्स्टेंट टी we get what does it mean at constant temperature so there is no change in temperature so dt will be equal to 0 this point is important so what equation we obtain at temperature constant du equals to delta u by delta v at constant t dv right now we will go for constant volume case now in constant volume case let us see we get only this term that is du is equals to delta u by delta t at constant v dt right now we know that du is equals to dq plus dw right so here dq can be written as du minus dw right and if we substitute here the value of du from the previous equation then it will be delta u by delta t at constant v dt plus delta u by delta v at constant t dv plus pdv right and similarly for the next step we get that delta u by delta t at constant v dt plus del u by del v at constant t plus p whole in bracket and dv right and if this process is being carried out at constant volume similarly at constant volume then dv equals to 0 so from here we can get see here since dv is equal to 0 so this term becomes 0 right so dq comes to be as equals to delta u by delta t at constant v dt right now we get two equations first equation is for the constant volume this equation and the second equation is this equation that is two and from here we can specifically write this one as this that is d delta q by delta t is equals to this is also in constant volume that is dq by dq v by dt is equals to del u by delta t at constant v now we can directly substitute this value here that is here the value can be substituted so ultimately what we get see here that is du is equals to dqv by dt multiplied by dt right so here a little change is required since we are taking the constant term so we will substitute this value okay so it will be like this that is delta q v at constant delta t at constant volume is dt now from the next video we will deal with heat capacity so for this video we have to understand that this term is cv that is specific heat capacity at constant volume now cv and cp a description is being given in the kinetic theory of gas video you can watch it i will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video now in the next step what we are going to see we can observe it so let us see when there is no constant things du equals to cv dt plus del u by del v 
at constant t dv. Right. From which expression do we obtain this one? From this expression. That is the first expression which we have obtained. Just here we have placed cv and here we have placed the same value. And we ultimately obtain this one. Now, we will do for a finite change. That is for a finite cycle, what will be the ultimate value? For a finite change, we will integrate these terms. Integration 2 to 1 du 2 to 1 cv dt plus integration 2 del u by del v at constant t dv. Right? And here we can write it as u2 minus u1 and cv t2 minus t1 plus integration since it is volumes of v2 to v1 del u by del v at constant t dv. And ultimately we get the expression as delta u is somewhat equal to cv delta t plus different terms. Okay. Now these terms will be not considered in this case. Now if we concentrate on these things, that is this part, then ultimately for a condensed phase, if we consider, there is, what do we mean by for condensed phase? To clarify this term, what is condensed phase? So condensed phase basically stands for large pressure application to carry out a small change in volume. So du cv dt plus delta u delta v at constant t dv. Now this expression is for finite change and this expression is for condensed phase. So see here, since dv is very small, as we have seen that the change in the volume is very small. So what happens is that here this term particularly is very small. So ultimately we get only this term that is du equals to cv dt. And final expression which is very important for us to understand for delta for delta u is cv into delta t which can be particularly written as delta u equals to n cv m t when number of moles are given. This is number of moles. Right. So here we stop the video. Now in the next video we will deal with some of the numerical problems based on this first law of thermodynamics and internal energy work and heat. Now so keep tuned to the channel and do not forget to like, share, subscribe and comment.